Hello and welcome to StarMorph where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. Today I'm going to show you how to build an OpenAI API request to integrate GPT-3 into a new simple web app. We're going to go step by step on how to make this request and use some of the examples in the OpenAI API. So let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen from the ages of 20 to 45, according to the YouTube analytics, let's get started building a web app with the OpenAI API. The first thing that we're going to do is go log into OpenAI and we're going to go into their quick start tutorial. We could do this from scratch as well, uh, and I can do that in another video, but we there's no reason to reinvent the wheel and OpenAI does give us a basic quick starter, so we might as well take advantage of that. So there's a little bit of a tutorial here. I'm gonna scroll down and go straight to copying this Git repository code base that OpenAI provides us. We'll go into our terminal and close that and clone that repository. And we're gonna go into all of this code and I'm gonna explain exactly how the code works and how it's communicating with OpenAI and how you can modify that to create your own GPT-3 application. But before we do that, let me just show you what the app looks like when it comes out of the box so you can understand what we're working with. So in order to run the app that we just downloaded, we're gonna run npm install and npm run dev. And that's gonna install all of the web apps dependencies and then run the website locally on our machine. And now we can open up this app and you can see that the stock template provided by OpenAI is a tool to use GPT-3 to generate pet names. So once we get this app working, we can type in, you know, bird or a dog and it will come up with names for that pet that have gone through GPT-3. I can't, if I try to do this right now, it hasn't yet been configured. So it's gonna tell me that I don't have my API key and that's going to be one of the first steps we're going to do once we jump into the code. If you'd like StarMorph to complete this service for you rather than me just telling you here how to do it, there's a link in the description. You can go to StarMorph.com and click book a Zoom call to book a free Zoom call with us and we can discuss integrating this service into your business. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and take a look at how this app works and how we can modify it. And also let me note that there is a readme file that comes along with this repo that's going to tell you some of the steps I'm going to go through. And as you can see here, um, we've just done this step, or we've done all of these steps, and now we need to do our API key step. So in order to do that, you can see in the repo it comes with this example environment file. An environment file is a file that contains uh, private information that you need in order to communicate, usually with APIs or other services. It's kind of like a, a password to connect to your instance of OpenAI. So um, what we need to do is we need to copy that example file into just .env. And now you can see we have this .env file here. And what you have to do is just paste your OpenAI key into here. I'm just going to copy my API key that I have. So right here, I'm copying this environment file from another repository that I have that already has my API key in it. And I'm going to put it into the OpenAI quick start node repo. And there we go. Now I have my API key in there. Okay, so let's start going into this repo. This is the good stuff here. We have a pages directory, and this is gonna have our main page, and it's also gonna have a page in the API directory. And these are the two main pages in this web app. It's not too much code here, so we'll go through each of these two pages and talk about how they work. So starting with the home page, first we have our input that is gonna go into the text field we saw on the website. So that's the animal input. And we're also going to soon have a result that comes back from the API. So first we're gonna create this function that's an on submit function. So that's when you click the send button uh, to generate the names. So here's the text field and then this is, the, when you click this button it will run the on submit function. And in this function, we're gonna to try to make a 
post request to our other file in the repo, the API uh, generate file. And we're going to try to send the animal input that we write in the text box over to that API file. If we don't get anything, we'll throw an error. If it does work, then we're also going to get a response, uh, the data that responds from the API is going to be put into this variable data.result and now we have the result coming back from the OpenAI API and we can then display the result in the website as well. So this is the function here that we're going to use to send the uh, request over to our API which is then going to communicate to the OpenAI API. Down here we have the visual on the page, the HTML on the page. So you can see this is the header, name my pet. We can change this to be, um, you know, whatever your GPT-3 tool is. So this is where you're going to actually edit the site's visual. And you can see here we're changing the animal input variable whenever someone types in the input, in the text input. And then we're going to call that on submit function when this form is submitted, when that button is clicked. All right, so this is the first page. Now let's go over to where the real meat of it is, talking to the OpenAI API in the API generate file. First off here, you can see that this is where we have our AI, API key uh, configuration. And this code here is provided by OpenAI in multiple places. It's also in their examples. If you copy one of their examples from the website, they'll also provide this setup configuration. So this is pretty standard. If you're using their API, you're going to need this configuration. Then we have this function here that is just configuring an error if um, the API key is not configured correctly. That's what we saw before we set it up. All right, now we're bringing, this is a little uh, function that just checks to see if there's no real characters in the animal name given another error check, then please write a correct name. All right, and then here is the, a big request right here. This is where we're actually reaching out to the OpenAI API. We're using their complete create completion function. Almost all of the functions on their API are using GPT-3 completion, and this is the function called to do that. We're using text DaVinci 3 as the model here, and you can see that this is the prompt we're sending over, generate prompt, taking in the animal variable. We're going to go into how that works down here. Temperature is a, is a very common metric that we send over to the API as well. It's basically, you can think of it going from zero to one, from reliable to very creative. So if you, if you need something that's very factual and you want the answer to be the same every time, you're going to go with a zero temperature. If you want a very creative, coming out with brand names, you can see here coming out with pet names, we want to be a little creative, so we're going to go with a little bit of a higher temperature. And you can see here that we're making this request in the response. If we get a good response, then we're going to store the response in this result variable by grabbing the JSON data choices, and that's just the way that the a API formats the response, uh, the text of one of the choices that's generated by GPT-3 in the API. So let me, that was a little bit um, convoluted. Let me just say, this is where we're getting the result from the GPT-3 on the API and we're storing it in this result variable. Okay, now let's look at our generate prompt function down here. First, we convert the animal to uppercase and then this is the actual prompt that we're sending over to GPT-3. So imagine you're talking to ChatGPT. This is what we're saying. And you can see that we also have a variable in here. It's the capitalized animal variable. And that is coming from this animal variable that we sent over from the text field in the other file. So basically, whatever comes in the text field is coming in here. So if you want your user to determine the prompt sent to GPT-3, this variable is doing that. Now we're also writing a bit of a prompt that helps the GPT-3 bot 
or helps the API know how to format our answer. We're actually giving it examples of what we want the answer to look like, and that helps GPT-3 understand how we want our answer to be. So we're saying, for example, give us Captain Sharp Claw, give us Fluffball names. These are name examples. And now, now do it again and give us something that's similar to the example I just gave you. So we're really structuring this prompt to know that it's supposed to be writing creative pet names. And this is where we can update anything we need to in the prompt being sent to OpenAPI. API. So let's, let's just change this totally. Let's see what we can do here. Let's say instead um, of doing a pet name, we want to ask the prompt to generate a poem. So let's say write a poem about nature in summer, make it uh, 40 words long and written like Ernest Hemingway. Okay, now let's go over and see if that update just worked. So now actually it doesn't really matter what we type in this field because we're just statically sending a prompt over. If I took in the animal variable and plugged it in here, then it would matter what we type in the text box. But just to keep it simple, let's just send a string over to GPT-3. Now, if this update worked, that means we're gonna get back a poem. Okay, so there is still another check that we can't enter, um, no characters with the animal name, so I just have to kind of fudge that. But you can see, summer, bright and warm, nature, alive and calm. So the prompt didn't quite get that I wanted to make it 40 words long. However, it did work on this prompt sent to write a poem about nature. So that's pretty cool that really all you have to do in this app is edit this string here. And now you have a totally customized GPT-3 little web app here. So this is a great starting point for your GPT-3 web app for your tool. If this is a little too technical for you, or you have some ideas that you wanna throw around with us, please reach out to Starmorph. I'm gonna put a link in the description. We'd love to talk to you because we're really excited about building with this API and we're building tools right now and we wanna collaborate with people and help you out building your project. So you can schedule a Zoom meeting with us. We can discuss how we can help with your project. Thank you very much for watching this whole video and please subscribe to watch to see more AI and web development tutorials. We're really looking at the cutting edge things that are coming out, you know, zero day coming out today and how we can integrate them into your business to make sure that you have that competitive edge of the new technology. So again, thank you for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.